Good morning. Or, sorry, good evening. Um, welcome to Redeemer. Um, if you'll note, uh, there are some stickies on the pews that have a family name and a number on them. And that was me getting an idea for uh, how we're spacing people out safely for Easter Day. I forgot to take them down before the service started, so if you want to know where you're sitting there <laughs> for 10 o'clock, there you are. Um, but yeah, just ignore those stickies. I'll take them down after the service. Um, but yeah, um, likewise, if you see your name and you have a serious issue with where your sticky is, let me know. Um, uh, that does remind me uh, that if you have not RSVP'd for our uh, worship services on Sunday, Easter Day, we have two options, one at 8.30 and one at 10 o'clock. I have heard from many of you, so thank you for letting me know. Um, but if you would like to RSVP, there is a link which you can find um, mentioned in your announcements. Um, and it's very simple. You sign up and say, I'm, you know, I'm so-and-so, and we're expecting this many from my family, or I'm a party of one or two or five. Um, and that helps us greatly figure out where we can fit everyone, know they'll have a place to sit, and still be safe. Um, and because people have responded so early, I've been able to actually increase the number of our capacity uh, because of that. So thank you for everyone who registered in advance. Um, uh, you'll notice uh, Glenn Driscoll is added to the prayer list this week, as is Mike uh, Demanic, although he didn't make it on this printing. Um, they both have uh, uh, bone issues. Uh, Mike uh, uh, broke his heel and is uh, getting treatment for that. I think he's going to have surgery for that, I believe. Um, and Glenn, I hear, fell off a ladder, I think it is, and uh, uh, broke a rib. Um, but he's doing well. He just kind of, you know hurts. Um, what else? Um, important things. Um, Easter lilies. Um, if you are joining the Episcopal Church and would like to do that officially, please let me know sooner than later because, as it also says, uh, April 25th is our visit from the bishop where he will be officially welcoming people into the Episcopal Church. Uh, you don't have to be received by the bishop to be a member of Redeemer. However, eventually it really does help as far as the polity and politics of the church are concerned. So if you are in the process of, of joining the church or would like to, please let me know. Um, and then the other announcements you can read for yourself, but I will say, because it is a rather odd announcement, um, that please take pictures. For my entire life, we were told not to take pictures in church. It's gaudy, it's gauche, it's, uh, you just don't do that. But now, we stream everything. We are beyond the walls. And frankly, how we present ourselves, uh, thank you, see, he did it. How we present ourselves digitally uh, is becoming as important as how we present ourselves face to face with the good work, charity, and cheer that we do out in the world. So how we present ourselves digitally matters. Um, that being said, we need more photos for the website, so please, during the service, if you see something lovely, take a picture of it. Or a friend is, you know, receiving communion and it just looks so dear. Just go ahead and take a picture of it. Uh, you don't have to get up in their face with a camera. That would get in the way of the worship. But at the same time, take a picture. Uh, no flashes if you can avoid it. Um, also, heads up. Um, I didn't put this in the announcement, but I'm going to make an. I will make an announcement um, on Sunday. Uh, starting on Easter Day, we're going to change how we do communion. In the past, you may know that I've come down with the bread and gone down the rows and given it to people. For me, that was just. It seemed to be. Um, the easiest way for uh, less people to come in contact with one another. Um, likewise, I was also going to get the, the offering plate and bringing it forward. 
However, as we've come to understand how the virus moves and grows much better since a year ago when those practices were put into place, uh, I'm now com comfortable uh, doing communion from the steps. So I think as we are uh, learning from our past experience and taking on shapes that are much more familiar, uh, much more uh, reminiscent of how we worshiped before 2020, uh, we're going to be doing communion, not today, but starting Sunday, we're going to be doing communion from the steps so that you'll come down, receive the bread, and then peel off the sides. Does that make sense? Great, thank you. All right. Again, thank you for being here. Thank you for being home. Welcome to Redeemer. For the bread which you have broken, for the wine which you have poured, for the words which you have spoken, now we give you thanks, O Lord. Please stand. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose dear Son, on the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life, and who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. 
You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel will slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or, or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with its head, legs, and inter inner organs. You shall ne let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you while I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate as a festival to the Lord. With, throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. Thank you. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O oh Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem, alleluia. A reading from 1 Corinthians. I received from the Lord what I also handed to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thou who at thy first Eucharist didst pray that all thy church might be forever one, grant us at every Eucharist to say, with longing heart and soul thy will be done. Oh, may we all one bread, one body be through this blessed sacrament of unity. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Before the festival of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world. He loved them to the end. The devil had already put in him the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. 
And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that all things had come from God and was going to God, he got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who was bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew he who was to betray him. And for this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet and put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you should go and do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their masters, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you, knew, if you know these things, you are blessed if you know them, if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. Is it strange that we expect to encounter the one for whom all things were made in a bit of bread and wine? Doesn't it seem like a weird non sequitur? And while bread and wine does seem a little odd, or at least oddly specific. It's not odd that we encounter Christ where we are not able to perceive. It seems very human to have trouble recognizing the divine. Consider the resurrection narratives that we will hear later in Easter season. Uh, We notice that the risen Christ in all of these stories is typically unrecognized, at least at the start. 
And the gospel writers are unabashedly candid about the disciples or whoever's on the road to Emmaus, let's say, about these encounters and their lack of perception. They practically draw highlighter circles around it. When they first meet Jesus, after he returned from the dead, Mary Magdalene mistakes him for a gardener until he speaks her name. Matthew has the 11 apostles account, encountering the risen Lord on a mountain where they worshiped him, but some doubted. But some doubted? They climbed a mountain and saw Jesus. What's up with that? John's gospel relates how the risen Jesus once stood on the beach as the disciples concluded a night of unsuccessful fishing. And even after Jesus discusses their unproductive night with them, they still, still fail to recognize Jesus. Only when they take this odd advice about casting their net on the other side do they pull in an enormous, crazy haul of fish, and then the light bulb blinks on. It is the Lord. It is Christ. Later, they return to shore, and Jesus cooks them breakfast, a meal that includes the fish they have just caught, and bread, which Jesus already has at hand, conveniently, which he breaks and distributes among them. Sound familiar? Nearly all these resurrection stories contain elements of doubt and non-recognition of a Jesus who is now somehow strange or elusive. Yet the disciples eventually come to perceive him, often by doing something very familiar. They eat with him. Tonight, we remember the Last Supper. On that night before he died, Jesus did a really cool thing. A thing we base our whole identity as Christians around. So does that mean our whole identity is around eating? No. That would make us nothing more than gluttons and hedonists. And our worship is so much more than just a fancy tea party. The point of the Last Supper is that we remember Jesus and his teachings. And what, the last, and what was the last teaching Jesus gave on that very same night at that very same meal? Jesus said, You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, I now say to you, Where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You should also love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples because you have love for one another. That's how we know we are Christians, by our love. That's how others looking from outside will recognize us as Christians, not by our pomp and circumstance or how tall we build a building, or how big our rec center might be, but how we show our love. Now, I included a little bit of the earlier part just to say that Jesus has already proclaimed this to the Jews, but now speaks it to the Gentiles. We are getting the same promise, the same covenant, that our friends in the Jewish community, the Jewish family, have already and still already get to have. They are God's chosen. We just get to tag along. It's like we're hitchhikers because Jesus rented a bigger bus and he was already headed where we wanted to go. The presence of the risen Lord suffuses this Eucharist. And we have access through him to an intensified communion, a communion both visible and invisible, including the communion of saints, as we call it. Through baptism, we are forever marked as Christ's own, and we gain entrance into this communion of saints that encompasses both the living and the dead at all time and in all places. This means that we are never alone. Even in situations of complete physical solitude, we still have one another. We are always, always enmeshed 
in a powerful spiritual network. And what we do or what we fail to do affects everyone. So it is very important that we love one another. So if we are looking for Jesus, if we are wondering where he has gone and where if we can go also, we ask ourselves, where do we find Jesus? Well, I would say here. But I would say so many other places. I would say we find Jesus in the example that he gave, washing the disciples' feet, in servitude, in service, in humility and humbleness, and in loving one another as he loves us. We find Jesus not only in the breaking of the bread, which we will recall in the, at the altar in just a moment, but we find Jesus in breaking bread with one another, in community, and in sharing that most common action, eating and taking in nourishment. His only Son, our God, who is from God and Father, God from God, light from God, true God from true God, that not made, one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man, for our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. Come again in glory to judgment and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. Believe, believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. He proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. As we're actually dead, and life for the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people, Form 3, can be found on page 387 in the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for our presiding Bishop Michael, our Bishop Brian, and our priest Andrew, and all who minister in your name that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. That light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Bless them, so to share in your heavenly kingdom. 
Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Lord, hear the prayers of your people. And what we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually. To the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in the thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. By the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Please stand. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and give yourself offering and sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For our sins he was lifted high upon the cross that he might draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death, 
he became the source of eternal life and salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at that last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is a kingdom, a power, and a glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrifice for us. And with those worshiping at home, in union, O Lord, with the faithful of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. We present to you our souls and bodies with the earnest wish that we may always be united to you. And since we cannot now receive you sacramentally, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. We unite ourselves with you and embrace you with all the love of our souls. Let nothing ever separate you from us. May we live in you and may you live in us, both in this life and in the life to come. Amen.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of God Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.
No. <laughs>